Brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please turn and share God's peace with one another. Our service this morning begins on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated for the reading of God's holy word. A reading from Genesis. The Lord said to Abraham, How great is this outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very grave their sin. I must go down there, down to see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went towards Sodom, while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abraham came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are 50 righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it if there are, if for the 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from me to do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be, far be that you, far be that from you shall not judge for the earth, do what is just. And the Lord said, if I find Sodom 50 righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abraham answered, let it take upon myself to speak to the Lord. I will, but dust to dust, but dust and ashes, suppose 50 Suppose five of the 50 righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for the lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it, for, for if I find 45 there. Again, he spoke to him. Suppose 40 are found here. He answered, for the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose 30 are found here. He answered, I will not do it if I find 30 here. He said, let me, make, let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose 20 are found here. He answered, for the sake of the 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, oh, do not let the, let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose 10 are found here. He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 138 for on page 793 in your Book of Common Prayer or in your bulletin. I will say the odds and you will say the evens. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will die now before your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have 
glorified your name and your word above all things. I call All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly, he perceives the haunty, haughty for affair. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. A reading from Colossians. As you, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him. Who is the head of every ruler and authority? In him also you were circumcised with a spirit, spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh and circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through the faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead, and you were dead in trespass and in uncircumcision of your flesh. God made you alive together with him. When he forgave us of all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands, he set this aside, nailing, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them triumphant over them in it. The word of the Lord. Our sequence hymn is hymn number 628, found in the blue 1982 hymnal. Please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he'd finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us, and do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. 
And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked. My children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he's his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if a child asks for an egg, will it give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Late last week, uh, my wife asked me uh, what I was going to preach on this Sunday. And you'd think it'd be obvious, the gospel, the Lord's Prayer. And I said, no, nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach on Sodom and Gomorrah. And she said, Sodom and Gomorrah? Why would anybody want to do that? And she said, most people probably wouldn't. And I said, well, I'm, it, I'm, not, I'm not most people. You know, I tend to be oblivious to the obvious. So uh, Sodom and Gomorrah it is. And the account of the destruction of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah is controversial. Whether you consider it to be literal history or a figurative, a figurative example illustrating the serious consequences of unrepented sin. The punishment was annihilation. But what were they guilty of? And that's where people's opinions can differ. There are three major ones that I've seen. People who tend to be uh, Christian fundamentalists and evangelicals believe that it was a, con a condemnation of sodomy, a sexual act. And the word itself is derived from the name of the city of Sodom. The pejorative, sodomite, is used as a slur against people who are gay. The argument is that such behavior is sinful and therefore God condemns a so-called gay lifestyle. That's one interpretation of the story. An alternative view is that the city's great sin was a cruel lack of hospitality on the parts of, of the inhabitants. And the story is that there were three individuals who came to visit Abraham. And the main reason they visited Abraham was to tell him and Sarah that they were going to conceive and have a child. And Abraham was close to 100, Sarah was 90. So that was a very uh, momentous uh, announcement indeed. And uh, he also said, by the way, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because their sins have reached up to heaven. Now, the identity of the three visitors is not made clear. A lot of people say that there are three angels who are sent by God. Some say there were two angels and the central speaker was the pre-incarnate Christ. Others say that, no, it was the Holy Trinity, the three, the three visitors. So we don't really know, except they were sent from God and of divine origin. Uh, two of the uh, angels, two of the visitors, went on to see Abraham's nephew, Lot, who lived in Sodom with his family. And they went to stay with them. And they said, you better get out because the city is going to be destroyed. Supposedly, hospitality or its lack was an issue. Now, practicing hospitality is more than it's viewed in our day as just being nice to people, saying hello, uh, shoveling somebody's walk off uh, during the winter, uh, bringing a new neighbor uh, some cookies or something like that, having them over to your house so they can get to know you. But hospitality in the ancient Near, Near East and cultures like it was 
actually, in some cases, a matter of life and death. You have the case of the Good Samaritan a couple weeks ago, and the man was waylaid on the treacherous journey from Jerusalem to Jericho, and it's treacherous because there are all sorts of places for people to hide and, uh, and be jumped by robbers, and that's what happened to the man in the story of the Good Samaritan. And uh, the only one who would stop and help him was a Samaritan, why right? he's called the Good Samaritan. And that was an act of great hospitality. He saved the man's life. Well, especially in the summertime in the Middle East, it can get hot and dusty. It's very arid. And uh, when, when somebody was traveling after a long, hard day, and they, they were maybe were not at their destination yet, but were close to it, but they had to stop overnight somewhere, it was great if, a, if they, a, somebody would open their home to strangers and they would offer them refreshment, they'd allow them to clean up, which is where the practice of the washing of feet comes from, and which we actually retain um, in some churches on Maundy Thursday when they have the ceremonial washing of feet. Even the Pope does that in the Vatican on Holy Thursday. And uh, offer them a place to stay, offer them food. And that's what hospitality was like in the, in the Middle East, and that still, uh, there's still that sense of hospitality there today. But would God destroy anybody because of its omission? Well, then we'd better be very careful about how we treat strangers. And this interpretation is favored by those more theologically liberal or progressive. The third view is the one that I subscribe to as the most persuasive in context is that the citizens were punished for planning violent rape or they approved and advocated such behavior. The idea of forcing somebody's will and desires upon a weaker, vulnerable person to satisfy their own lust for power, control, satisfaction, or domination is an abomination to God. It's an assault on a person's dignity. It dehumanizes them, it humiliates them, and makes the victim subservient to the sadistic predator. It's a violation of a person who is made in the image and likeness of God. So what does that say today about child rapists, child molesters, child pornographers, human trafficking? It doesn't say very well, much for them. But the rapists in Sodom salivated in anticipation of gang raping men or women. I say women too, because in, a, in the story that's not a part of our text, Lot, Abraham's nephew, offered his own two daughters to the mob for them to rape in place of his two guests, the, the angels or whatever the divine beings were. Now, that doesn't say much. Uh, I, I wouldn't do that to my daughters. I wouldn't offer them in place of anybody. But uh, that's what he was willing to do to protect these two visitors. And uh, so it shows that the rapists, the would-be rapists, the predators, would have taken either men or women. So that uh, kind of rules out the idea that people were punished just because of homosexuality. It's not a question of gay or straight behavior, but it was equally applicable. Just imagine a city of potential rapists and abusers. As bad as things are in our culture with all the killings that are going on, we haven't reached that point. Well, there was no remorse or repentance over what the citizens intended to do. And because they refused to change their ways, they lost the ability, the desire, and the will to change. They became entirely desensitized to the situation. And then Abraham decides to intervene on their behalf. He probably had a hard, a hard time believing that everybody in Sodom and Gomorrah deserved to die. And so he tried to persuade God by appealing to God's mercy and justice. He said, shall not the judge of all the earth do what is right? Abraham was a great intercessor. 
He was both naive and noble at the same time. I would love to have uh, God in, or Abraham interse intercede to God on my behalf. He'd be a great prayer partner. So Abraham started negotiating with God. And it's, 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 it's kind of funny, at least from our perspective, because who, a, a mere human, trying to negotiate, to bargain, to strike a deal with the creator of the universe? So Abraham pled, if there were only 50 righteous people in the city, would you spare them? And God said, yes. If there were 50 righteous people in the city, God would spare them. But there weren't any. And then, then Abraham said, well, how about 45? There weren't 45 people either. And then the countdown starts. How about 40, 30, 20? And it was not to be not because God was unfair, but because the people refused to repent and there weren't even 10 righteous people to be found who would. So the promised ju judgment was executed. We can't say that Abraham didn't try. We can't say that God wasn't merciful. Even today, if you go to the Middle East, uh, that's still a part of their culture, to bargain. And so that's what Abraham was doing what came naturally to him. When we were in Israel more than two months ago, and we'd go to different sites, almost as soon as we got off the bus, people would be crowding around us wanting to sell us stuff, whether it was jewelry or trinkets or, or clothing, whatever it might have been. And uh, you'd go into a store, a shop, it'd be the same. They would, they would expect you to negotiate with them. Uh, if you were at a street vendor, same thing or even people who come to you when you step off your van. When I, when I got off at one site, there was somebody who tried to put a headdress on my head, and it was like something a Bedouin would wear. And we were warned that don't accept anything if you don't plan to purchase it. Because if you physically take it, they expect you to negotiate with them for it. And so, he put it on my head, and I immediately gave, him back to, I gave it back to him, and then he shoved it in my hands. I said, no, 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 thanks, but I, I'm not interested, and then, uh, and then walked away. I'm just not a type of person who likes to bargain or negotiate. Uh, you know, it used to be if you'd get a new car, you could negotiate the price. Of course, now you pay whatever the dealer wants to charge you over list price, but it didn't used to be that way. Now, not all, everybody feels that way. When our son uh, was stationed in the Middle East, he had, a, he had a chance to visit Israel for a few days, and, and uh, he went to the markets and everything, and he likes to bargain. So he just relished it, you know, to try to out-negotiate these guys, who are professionals, of course. And he, he said he got some good deals on some rugs while he was over there because of his negotiating abilities. But that's not me. Yet Abraham, being a native of the area, was a born negotiator. And that's why I tried to negotiate with God. He wasn't being arrogant. He wasn't trying to test God. He was pleading to God on behalf of the people who were going to die. But those people chose to give in to their desires and forfeited any opportunity to grasp the, the forgiveness and reconciliation that God had offered them. It was their very stubbornness, their hard hardness that did them in. It wasn't that they didn't have any chance to change their ways, they had plenty. And we see throughout the Bible, throughout Scripture, that God is, God is patient, God's merciful. But for our day, we should keep this in mind, God's patience is not inexhaustible. Amen. Continuing on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> we believe in, in one God, God the, Father, the Father, the Almighty, maker, maker of, heaven of heaven and earth, <laughs> of all that is seen and unseen. We believe, we believe in, in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only, the only Son of God, God eternally begotten of the Father. Father. 
God from, from God, God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge, we acknowledge one, one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. In the Anglo and Cycle of Prayer, please pray for the Church in Wales. In the Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, St. John's Broken Bow, Rev. Mary Jane Gothley, Christ Church, Central City. In the DR, St. Andrew Church, St. Philippa the Apostle Church. In the Parish Cycle of Prayer, those who serve at St. Francis for these gatherings and for all strive to share the good news of, the, of Jesus Christ. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Just, Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Scott, our bishop, Tom, our priest, Terry, our postulant for the deaconate, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that, that they may be faithful. We pray for our president, Joe Biden, our governor, Pete Ricketts, for all elected and appointed officials of the communities in which we live, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Lord, we lift up those in our congregation and those we know who are ill, especially Robert T., Alberta Y., Chris C., Dolores, Joe, Charles J., Patrick E., Hannah, Jen O. Are there others? We also pray for those with special concerns, especially Amanda, Matt, Amanda and Baby, are there others? The Anglican Worldwide Bishops who gather at Lambeth. Lord, have compassion on those that suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. We remember all those who have died. Are there any? Give to all the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for those who serve our country at home and abroad, especially those who are deployed in, in harm's way. Just G. Are there others? Be with them and their families, Lord, giving them comfort and hope until they are once again reunited in peace. We ask that you watch over all, all those who travel. Diane M. and family, Mike and Terry, Alan and Linda, Cindy P., Heidi, Daryl and Stephanie. Are there others? Keep them safe as only you can. 
We ask that you continue to pour out your blessing on blessings on those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially Steve B, James R, Michael G, Aylin M, Rick S. Are there others? And those who are celebrating anniversaries, are there any? O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, whose will it is to hold both heaven and earth in the peace of your kingdom, give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God. The offertory hymn today is hymn number 460, found in the blue 1982 hymnal. <laughs>
our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer B, found on page 367 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you've made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer in the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we, according to his command, O Father, <clears throat> we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. <clears throat> for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving.
continuing on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for our announcements. <coughs> Only a few announcements I really want to highlight today. Uh, first one is for our younger uh, members. Uh, we are having a craft Sunday today, so they are welcome to stop by the Sunday school rooms and meet with Miss Jean. She'll have some crafts back there while parents are at coffee hours, so please feel free to join that. Also, I have the tickets for Funplex, so when I get downstairs, hang loose, and I have the list of everybody. If you order tickets, uh, please pick them up from me. If you are watching us online and you've ordered tickets, you need to pick them up by Close of Business Tuesday. I'm not going to be standing at the front gate handing out tickets on Wednesday, so please call the office and coordinate pickup if you order tickets and are not here today. Also, it's time to start signing up for Journeys, our youth program. If you are in the ages of 12 to 18 or going into 6th through 12th grade, please sign up down at the Spirit Hub. Let us know that you plan on coming. And we're asking our returning students to please sign up as well. Awesome. You're on top of it. I love it. Um, there's some meetings there coming up. Uh, Sunday school open houses in another couple weeks. Watch for that. Big thing, though, is the picnic's coming up in a month. A month from now is the picnic. This year, the picnic's going to be at the pavilion right at the bottom of the hill there by in Everett Park right next to the splash pad. And Bellevue has told us if the weather permits, the splash pad will be going for those of members of our parish who are young. And those who are young at heart and just want to enjoy the water. So please, come on down. Um, we have it reserved from 11 to 5, but I think 11 to 2 is probably what most people tend to do with our picnic. Bring a lawn chair, unless you want to sit at a picnic table the whole time. And if you've got one of those canopies, bring it. We'll get a couple of people to help set it up, add a little extra shade because there are a bunch of us. Um, but bring a lawn chair and uh, a side or dessert to share. If we wind up with 50 desserts on only one side, oh well, I like that idea. No, uh, just kidding. Bring whatever it is you would like to share. We will be providing uh, hamburgers and hot dogs that day. Uh, we have two spouses who have been volunteered to cook that day. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Corey, um, for, for volunteering or letting your spouses volunteer you. Uh, but <laughs> they will be cooking the burgers and everything. They'll go down a little bit early, get things started. Um, and then we'll probably be ready to eat somewhere around 11 o'clock, which would be wonderful. So please, mark your calendar. And we're still looking for some help with the landscape plan. If you know anybody who does that, please have them reach out to me so that I can work with them. Uh, I've got 13 scouts that are life scouts looking for eagle projects. And there are two beautiful projects sitting right out here on the driveway that can be done, but I'd like to give them a plan instead of letting them come up with their own. <laughs> um, not that they don't do a wonderful job, but I would like to give them a plan so they know what's going on. Let's see. I don't see anybody with a birthday or anniversary listed. Are there any that didn't make the bulletin? Anybody that you know of watching online? Okay. It's our going forth hymn today is hymn number 551. 1982 hymnal. Please stand.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.